Hello YouTube, in this video I'm going to be teaching you how to make an NPC that follows you and tries to kill you. And this is going to be similar to the game Barry's Prison if you've ever played that before. So let's get started. Okay, so in Barry's Prison Run, basically you're a prisoner and there's this cop called Barry. And this cop isn't too vigilant. So the cop doesn't really understand what's going on and he will only see you if you are within a certain radius. And if he sees you within that certain radius, then he'll come and kill you. So we're going to be coding that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you want to find a cop. So I've gone to Toolbox and you can look up anything you want that you want to be the killer. So I'm just going to look up cop and you can see there's a bunch of cops here. I'm just going to choose this one because he looks cool. And he's got four scripts already. I really don't need these scripts, so I'm just going to delete. I'm going to delete. I don't need this. So we've got our cop and it's got no scripts now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how to make this thing walk. So I'm going to play this game and I'm going to click this to change it to server. So now this is what the Roblox server sees and I'm going to click on the cop and I'm going to show you what this property is. So inside of this cop, there should be a humanoid object. If there is no humanoid object, then that's not a nice model for you to work with. One of the biggest things that we need is for the cop to be able to walk. So what I'm going to show you is this property right here called walk to point. And this is some XYZ coordinate in our game. And whatever you set it to is what the cop will walk to. So for example, if you want this cop to walk to my character, I can take my character, I can get the humanoid root parts position, which is this thing right here, 0, 4, 0. And I can set the walk to position or walk to point to that 0, 4, 0 and the cop will walk to where I am. So that's how this works. So for example, if I wanted this cop to walk over here, I can look at the position of the part, which is this, this coordinate right here, this 30 number. So I can copy this. That is the position of the part. That is where this part is in our game. So these three numbers is basically where the part is in our game. And I can take my cop and I can look at the humanoid and I can set the walk to point to that position and he will begin walking to the part. Okay, so now that we know how walk to works, I wanna show you what magnitude is. And magnitude is basically the distance between the cop and me. So for example, in Barry's prison run, the cop won't do anything until you are near the cop. So that means you have to be within some distance and then the cop will notice you and the cop will start coming at you. So to do that, we need to use something called magnitude. And magnitude is basically that. It will tell us the distance between one object and another object. So for example, this, ob this distance right here is some number. And to get that number, we need to do, we need to get the position of the cop, we need to get the position of the player, and then we need to subtract the number and then we have to get the magnitude. Let's stop the game, let's just start coding. So I'm gonna create a script under server script service. Now I've got my new script and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the position of the enemy, which is the cop. So I'm gonna say local cop equals workspace.cop. And I need the cop's humanoid root part. So I'm gonna say local HRP equals cop dot humanoid root part. And then now I need the cop's humanoid root parts position. So local, we can say hrp position equals hrp.position. We also need to get the player that joined the game. So we have to use a player added event. The game.players.player added connect function player. So now what this line is saying is whenever some player joins our game, we're gonna call it player. And now we need to get the player's humanoid root part position. So we're gonna say local player hrp equals player. But first we gotta make sure there's a character. So we need to use a character added event. Character added function. Okay. So now, basically, what we've said so far is when any player joins our game, call it player. When that player has its character loaded, call that char. And now we're going to get the humanoid root part of the player. So we're going to say char, wait for child, humanoid root part. Let me show you what all this means in the actual game. So, for example, a player joined the game. And so we have this player right here. This player has joined the game. And what it's doing is it's waiting for the character to load. The character is this thing right here, the model in workspace with our name. And it's basically saying, find the humanoid root part, which is this thing right here. That thing right there is basically some invisible part inside of our character. And that is what this is right here. Saying, wait for something called humanoid root part. That's what this is saying. And we're calling it player HRP. I can take all of this cop stuff and I can move it down here. So now we've got player, player's humanoid root part. We've got cop, which is this thing right here. We've got the cop's humanoid root part. I'm just going to call this cop HRP and I'm going to call this cop HRP position. I'm going to replace this with that. So we've got player humanoid root part, 
we've got cop we've got the cops human root part which is cop dot humanoid root part which is this thing right here and we've got the cop human humanoid root parts position which is the position of this thing which is also this number right here that is cop hrp position right here and if you change this if you move this guy around that cop hrp position is going to change like for example it's the first number is 24.07 if you move it around that number will change so that is the position of the cop at any given time first we have to find the distance between the player's hrp and the cop's hrp so to do that we need the player hrp's position so we're going to say local player hrp position the player hrp that position so what is this this is the player's humanoid root part but it is the position of the player's humanoid root part so for example if i play the game let me run this side by side so we've got game.players.player added that means whenever a player joins this player just joined which is me whenever the player's character loads then create a variable called char and then create a variable called player hrp which is the humanoid root part object inside of the character which is once again it is my character's humanoid root part we've got cop which is this guy right here we've got cop hrp which is this thing right here which is the humanoid root part inside of the cop which is once again an invisible part that's always inside of all objects that can walk and can take damage and all that for example my character and this cop they're both objects that could walk and jump and take damage so that's why they have a humanoid and they have a humanoid root part which is basically just that invisible part inside of their character so the cop has one humanoid root part called cop hrp and that cop humanoid root part has a position which is literally this thing right here this thing right here so that's what that is this is the humanoid root parts position of the cop and this is the humanoid root part position of the player so this is the player this is the humanoid root part and this is the position and the same thing with the cop just right here so now what we have to do is we have to get the distance between the two so we know where this thing is and we know where the player is but what is the distance well to get the distance we have to use something called magnitude so what i'm going to do i'm going to make a while loop just to show you so this is going to execute every two seconds. Anything in between this do and this end will execute every two seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what magnitude is. Say so mac local this thing equals player HRP position minus cop HRP position dot magnitude. And I'm going to actually put all of this, put all of these in here so that it actually changes. And now we've got the cop's position, player's position, and the distance between them. And that's what this is doing. We're getting the position of the player, we're subtracting with the position of the cop, and we're taking the magnitude, and this is just the distance. So now, if I say warn distance between player and cop, local distance, or print distance. So now, every two seconds, it's gonna tell us the distance between the player and the cop. So as you can see, distance 15, if I move farther away, it becomes 30, 25, 30, 60. So if I move closer, the distance will become less. So now if I'm really close to the cop, the distance is a very small number. It's four. If I'm really, really close to him, if I'm uncomfortably close to him, it's going to be very, it's going to be close to zero. Now you know how distance works. What we can do now is we have to check if the distance is a too small number. So for example, if, if you get too close to the cop, then the cop has to start attacking you. And to do that, we need to make sure that we need to check if this distance right here is a really small number. So for example, we can try like 30. Let's say if distance is less than or equal to 30, then all we're saying here is if the number that we printed here, if this is less than or equal to 30, that means you're too close to the cop. So maybe like you're within this circle that I'm drawing this invisible circle of radius. So if your distance is less than or equal to 30, then the cop should attack you. So I'm going to say warn cop angry. And I can make this like 0 0.5 to make it a little bit faster. So now if the distance is less than or equal to a certain number and the cop will be angry as you can see the cop is angry the cop is angry the cop is angry but if you're notice how if i'm too far away the cop won't be angry but if i approach the cop cop angry so now that we know how that works we can finally get to actually making the cop follow us so now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to get the cop's humanoid object if you remember from the beginning of this video the way to make a cop move or the way to make any humanoid move is by using the humanoid walk to which is right here it's walk to point we can set this point to whatever we want and it will move there so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new variable for the cop's humanoid so cop humanoid equals cop humanoid can just do that ah called it chop again okay so we've got cop humanoid and what we have to do is we have to set the walk to 
point right here. We set this walk to point. So we'll just say copy .walk to point equals. And now all we need to do is set it to the player's position, which is just that. So now it's gonna walk to the player. Let's let's just see if this works. All right. So oh, here we go. He's following me. So that is how you can make the cop follow you. And as you can see, he's probably not gonna stop following me because I can't outrun him. <laughs> For the same speed no matter where i go this cop is going to follow me and if you notice the movements are kind of they're not too smooth like if i walk in a zigzaggy pattern it's kind of weird right so what we can do to minimize that is we can instead of doing weight 0 0.5 we can just make a weight so now it will every single like fraction of a second it's going to keep checking so now it's gonna as you can see it's much much smoother now and this cop is he's pretty fast we can slow him down if you want to we can make him faster if you want to. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. So to do that, we just have to modify this thing called walk speed. This is 16 by default, the cop's walk speed. If you change this to like eight, then he's gonna be a lot slower and the player will be able to outrun him. I can outrun the cop. And if you notice, if I get too far from him, he's gonna stop wanting to chase me. As you can see, I can move around, the cop doesn't care. Now the moment that I get close to the cop, He's going to get angry again. Here we go. He's chasing me. So we can do that or we can make it bigger than 16, which is let's. So we have our, we have our walk speed. We can make it like 25, for example. Evil cop is coming for us, basically. I can still outrun him I'm pretty fast. Now, one thing that I could do is I could also I could change the cop speed to like 45. It really give me like no chance of winning. And he's already he's already up my tail. Yep. So that's one thing you can do. And I'm just gonna set this back to 16. Not jump power, not jump power. Set this back to 16. So the last thing we have to do is we have to detect if the cop is too close. Print distance. Okay, so I'm just gonna print the distance here. Okay, as you can see, that's the distance. And if the cop is too close, then we want the cop to kill the player. And too close could be like less than three. Because as you can see, if the cop is too close to you, then it should kill you. So that's the last step to making this work and all we have to do for that is we have to do one more check we can say if the distance is less than equal to three then kill the player and one way to kill the player is by setting the humanoid's health to zero what does that mean that basically means going to your player object clicking humanoid and setting your health which is this thing right here setting this equal to zero that will kill the player. So that's what we have to do. All we have to do to do that is we have to get local player humanoid equals character dot humanoid. Then we can say player humanoid dot health equals zero. And that will result in our player's death. So now we're just gonna try it and it should kill us very, very quickly. So I'm running away, I'm running away. Now, if I get too close to the cop, I'm dead. All right, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.